we made what we thought was a hell of a good business plan of the cost of marketing, of the cost of production. It looks really nice. Uh, and we off we go. Uh, we went just to the next leather fair, uh, and then leather fair after leather fair. But after one and a half, two years, not much was happening. Uh, we have spent more money than we expected, and uh, we were not getting the result we wanted. Uh, so we really went back to the table and uh, sat down and said, where are we going? What market are we targeting? We had to, uh, had to put down a specific line. This is the line we want to get this into. This is the market. And that led to, we went to just a two leather fairs. And we used a lot less of money. And we started to get some results. Anyhow, the cost of doing things from Iceland is quite high. We are traveling to Europe or uh, the States. It always cost a lot of money. So the expenses, the cost of the marketing, we should have multiplied by 10, what we put down in the beginning. That would be about right. But the most important is to set down your target. What is your target market? If you don't do that, you will spend a lot of money and get nothing from it. That is well, where we started, the mistake we did in the beginning. After we targeted the market, it took take a long time to put, get something into a market like this. But it starts. You get the small orders. We start to grow, get the bigger orders, and that, that's how it happens. And the most important is that usually people, when they're doing their business plan, they put too low cost on marketing. I have seen many plans for making something or selling something. It's, it's in our mind, in a way. Uh, to create something, create something uh, to sell. We start too late on thinking about where we're going to sell it, to whom we're going to sell it. it, it it's, like I said, it's an easier part to make the love. That, that was just doing, dealing with ourselves, our resources, our technical knowledge and everything was much easier, we could pass that easy. But then we come to convincing other people of how brilliant this is, how beautiful this is, it takes time. Uh, most of the fashion companies we have learned, they just go the mainstream. They are ready to take a little, little trial of this, see how it works, but it goes very, very slowly. It's much easier to just use the same materials, same recipes that have been working through the years and will continue to work. I mean, we are looking at, in, in the films, there is, is always some uh, recipes that work. All the market do the same. They focus on what is, what is working. So new things take always a lot of time. And the patience. Patience is the most valued the value you have to have to be able to get something going. It, I'm a, I don't want to make you so think this is everything is impossible to get into market. It's not. But the most important thing is that you have a limited source always. And you have to focus your source into the right direction. Otherwise, you will spend too much time, energy, money into doing something that will but not work. 
when we uh, when we had focused a little bit, we uh, found out that we targeted on the high fashion brands as our beginning, and that was a totally correct uh, decision. We got into some of them, we got something going, and after that, the others start to follow. There need to be some leaders that use new things that others will follow. Usually go backwards a couple of times. What, uh, what's the story of uh, how do you get over those uh, barriers? By focusing. By focusing our limited resource on where we got. Uh, where, what we decided. If we would have made a wrong decision when we were targeting, we probably would have gone bankrupt. So that that is one of the key issues when you are uh, looking at market is to select and be careful when you're selecting, and you have to have a strong argument why you're selecting this. We have had a very little help in funding, very little. Uh, what we have, we have this lab skin production and to tell you the truth that have financed in the beginning financed the marketing of the fish leather now it is getting the opposite we are getting uh, getting some return from the fish leather marketing but if we wouldn't have had the lamp skin when we were building up our marketing part uh, it probably wouldn't have worked what markets uh, was successful for you guys and uh, what markets uh, were closed and no interest and you This high fast Gucci, Prada, Ferragamo, what you call it. They are more open and everybody in the fashion industry, <coughs> we got high class, middle class, many classes, everybody is looking at what these big brands are doing. So that was our, de our decision was made on that. Base. Everybody is looking at what these companies are doing. They might be hard to get in, and they are, <coughs> and they are really, really demanding of the quality of the techniques and everything. But everybody is looking at what they are doing. So that's uh, you spread the word. You have to target your. I'm, I'm just advising. You have to target your group. What type of viewers are you looking for? Where can we find them? And where can we uh, get to spread the word? That's the most important. If you if you uh, if you make a film that uh, and show it to people that is definitely not interested in it, you're just wasting your money. It's the same with us. We know always, uh, especially when we are with young companies or uh, new ideas, there is a target group. The difficult thing is to find it and define it, where it is. And also, of, of course, the marketing funds are usually very limited. Can you tell us what fashion uh, brands you're working with? Some of them? Uh, fashion brands they are always never repeating, repeating the same. No, no, no. So one year we are working with Gucci, other year with Prada. Currently we are working with Escada, and we are working with Kenzo, and we are working with Alice and Duban this year. Alice and Duban? Yeah. Okay, nice. Uh, so what will be next year, I don't know. But we have to go between these companies. Uh, they have... Uh, they have a special approach, they never go to the fair. Or very little there. Maybe they send their young designer or apprentice that is in the big companies to a fair to look, but never the real decision makers. So you have to travel, you have to go. You have to go with these, these companies. In the beginning, the most difficult is to get in the door. Now it's not so difficult, they know me, and, and the door are open. If the right people are there, I can come and listen. How you made a decision to like, uh, 
use this skin of fish, you know, like it's very like a strange and uh, the depreciation comes both out of meat. And this was uh, uh, decrease in the, in the lump uh, in sheep farming in Iceland that make less raw material for us. Uh, we have a very strict regulation about importing other skins. So we that was complicated and uh, we also had old stories. Uh, like in the West Fjord, uh, they had in the old days when it was not very much of leather available. They made a shoe out of this. It was not really tanned and it didn't last long, it didn't last very short, because they had a measurement over the going over the mountain that needed so many pairs of shoes to cross. But that was one of the, the idea really came from that. Why not fish? We have plenty of raw material here. And we started with the raw material like most people do. Find a solution for that. At the same time, we should have done some marketing research. That had been very clever. Then we would have knowing where to go after we have made something. There was many companies who started on a similar time as we, producing fish. Uh, I know of five, six with us. Oh, These five are all now. Norway, in, uh, Ireland, in Canada, uh, in uh, France, and one in uh, was Lithuania. Or all of them have disappeared a long time ago. That is basically, most of them didn't have a so support as we had in, the, in other products that could keep us going in the development. Development is quite complicated. Uh, all the techniques for tanning have been developed for dealing with half blood species. And if you put a fish into a tanning, technique of our blood species, you just make a fish soup. It will dissolve. So we had to find a totally new approach. We started to develop it in uh, 95. Took us many years to complete that. And of course we were not doing, uh, going very fast. We had other issues to solve. Uh, we didn't have a didn't have, we did, only did have one technician full-time in researching this. And all this research is as we know it takes so long time. You just change one thing and the process is more than a week. So you can only try 52 things during a year. And that's just, you've got one thing solved, then comes the next. And it took a long time. But with all the knowledge that we have built up in this trial period that was very long, today we are very quick solving problem. So we can go back in our know-how. This don't work. This work. This might work. But you uh, made this technology by using your own resources. The yeah, we, we had a consult from uh, uh, from a university professor. <laughs> uh, about biological thing. The uh, tanning thing is a very specific techniques and that's not many people who know how to do it. So that part was developed just inside here. But uh, we got the support from the university while we were working on this, for consultants. Mm -hmm. uh, but next level in the, in the clothing, shoes, bags and this, uh, in the market. And we are also looking at the top level of interior design. Okay. That is a new field for us. So, and we, uh, we are already getting this result there. Seems to be much easier when you have, can point out the other. This has been already made out of this. And we have, we have done quite a lot of getting uh, things made for us, so we can just show. This can be used like this, that, that, that's much easier. 
uh, in many cases it's like that, that uh, uh, designers, they love the materials. They want to design out of it, but to get it to fit, you need to fit two, three, four skins together. Then it goes to the producers, and he kind of kills the mat the project. It will be too expensive. I have said, sat on a meeting like this in Italy, and, and the producer, the designer want to make this like this. But the producer said, oh no, 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 no. We should use, uh, much easier to cut from big piece. And the designer gave up. Uh, we decided to do not, at that point at least. Uh, then we have to, uh, then we have to kind of start again, the marketing. So we did, decided to do not at this time. Try to work with somebody, and we have uh, we have supported many young designers to use our material, and some of them have succeeded or have failed, like always happened. And do you use some particular fish scans? Or In the technical way it doesn't matter, but of course when you're marketing things you have to have a steady supply of raw material. So we are using salmon skins, we are using cod skins, we are using uh, what we call wolfish, and we are using plugs. These four species on a regular base. Uh, silly question, have you tried the uh, whale skin? Or? Uh, yes and no. <laughs> uh, whale doesn't have a skin in the, in the regular structure. They have a fat layer and they have a membrane on top of it. Except the male on one, one place. They have a skin, and we have tried to tan that. I heard that, <laughs> uh, I heard that there were suits made out of this. Uh, yeah, that's correct. How often do you like, experiment or come up with maybe new techniques of what else you can do? We are always, we have one technician here that is only working on new things. We, we have to develop, we have to keep the development going. Uh, now we are. Uh, Working, especially working on a greener way to produce our leather. Uh, we are we, we have the benefit of using waste material. Uh, we have green energy. Uh, we have pretty pretty good tanning methods compared to other tanning methods, but we want to get it even better. So uh, that takes time. There is always some projects ongoing. Three, four projects that we uh, that we work on, and that's something every company that is working in in some production have to do. We have to keep the development going, otherwise we will just be out of date in a few years. There is another company that is in Brazil. They make mostly mostly making Amazonian fish. Big fish, they call Pierre Roku. Really huge skins, and uh, they seem to be have a good technique. Uh, we have cooperated in some projects. I have, I have sold some Pierre Roku for them, and they have sold some salmon for me. <laughs> so we don't even we, the market. Uh, we have two companies in the whole world. It's not a competition, so it's better to. Just work together and, and, uh, and getting the voice that is uh, spreading the message of fish leather a little louder. Mm -hmm. Don't give up. <laughs> Go ahead and uh, focus on your target.